Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm Caliban, I'm the noob, and I am screaming inside my heart. (laughs) I I know what you're talking about. Uh, We're a couple of magical people ready to moon prison power make up this episode. Sailor Noob is brought to you by the healing powers of an onsen. Today we are talking about episode number 40. Mizumi no Densetsu Yokai, Usagi Kazoku no Kizuna in Japanese, the legendary Lake Yokai, the bond of Usagi's family, the English translation, and the English title, Last Resort. Last Resort. <laughs> Sounds like a direct-to-video horror film. Uh, it kind of does. Where you would scream outside of your heart <laughs> with your mouth. <laughs> How uh, can that... It, you've seen this story, right? Yes. Many people have seen this story. Um, it was probably um, came out a while ago now when this episode's coming out, but a theme park near Tokyo uh, in Fuji Yoshida called Fu- Fuji Q Highland. Mm-hmm. Just like, are they all lands? I guess we got Disneyland, but we got a lot of lands. We covered Dreamland on on the show before, mm-hmm. but yeah, they have a, a new policy, and the way they introduce it is in classic, uh, you know, excuse me, excuse me, Japanese style. Yeah. They have signs on the like the roller coaster that say, you know, because of this time and COVID and everything, you know, we want to make sure that people aren't, you know, infecting each other. Yes. So part of that is screaming and they say, please, please scream inside your heart. Which is, <laughs> it made me laugh so hard. It's so Japanese. It's like, what, what it's is, so ridiculous. But I mean, like, I don't know if their customs or that, you know, their precautions are different than ours, but we had brunch the other day, mm-hmm. you know, and it's outside. So we figure here. Fine, that's fine, right? Mm-hmm. They're on a roller coaster. They're going like forty miles an hour. Wind is whipping everywhere. Yeah, I, I don't. I think that would lessen the chance of your your scream uh, infecting somebody else. Yeah, well, and plus they a make scream people is wear like, masks too. Sure, like I guess air is coming out, but you're generating. You have using that air to you know make a sound. It isn't just like you going <sighs> like that's a lot of air. Mm-hmm. So what, what's the problem? If they wanted to, if they know. wanted to provide us with the new motto for 2020, <laughs> please scream within your heart. They they did it. I know, right? But as a practical thing, this just seems like the weirdest kind of over attentiveness um, to. I I love what you just said though. That is a perfect model for 2020. And now I just want to say it all the time. Please scream within your yeah, heart. Well, wait till the flying snake monsters show up. Yeah, That's in uh, August, I think. I know, right? Um, did you watch the video that they um, created? This park created a video to show that it was possible to not scream and ride a roller coaster. <laughs> It's just so weird and, and, and literal. Everything they do. I know. And it, it's like two guys. Uh, one guy is in a business suit and tie and the other guy is like in a, a button up shirt and a little bow tie. And they're both wearing masks and they don't scream the entire time. But the guy in the suit with a tie has has a disposable mask that doesn't fit very well. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't I lost count of how many times he touched his mask during um the ride because he was about to fall off or he had to adjust it and it was like oh my gosh so they didn't scream but the other guy didn't touch his mask at all but anyways (laughs) before we get started i should say that we've got an instagram now yeah uh new thing for us uh for 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 this show (laughs) I, i feel like um i've dabbled in the gram before i've very are you as old as me dabbled <laughs> where you uh with the, with, with the advent of social media you're uh-huh. like oh so sign up for that i'll sign up for this i'll sign up for this and now i've got a grinder account no it's... now and I, so i've definitely have had an instagram account for a long time but yeah. i don't really do a lot with it i, I don't either and i, I actually want but, to get more into it so but we've got a situation where you know, there's a lot of cool Sailor... I like, I follow a lot of Sailor Moon people on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Every day it's merchandise and art and they're talking about live action shows and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And yeah. I 
think we should get in on that. Absolutely. So we created an Instagram, and mm-hmm. it's on Instagram at noob underscore sailor, yes. which is the same thing as our Twitter handle, which yes. makes it easy for people that follow us on Twitter. Yes, and, and if, Instagram. And if you don't, <laughs> what's, what's going on? <laughs> you can do both. It's really easy. Yes. And we don't have a lot on there right now. We're working on it, but we're going to share things on there. Uh, about that are Sailor Moon related. Mm-hmm. So we're looking for people to follow us. It's Instagram noob. Uh, maybe work on that. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> when you get on Instagram and, you know, it's, we, we signed on to Twitter and we're noob sailor because, I don't know, some dead, dead account is sailor noob, you know, from mm-hmm. like years ago, hasn't tweeted. Nothing you can do about it. I got on Instagram and was trying to do sailor noob and there's like, Five or six noobs or sailor yeah, noobs, noob like sailors or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so we so we got what we got. But yes. uh, yeah, we'd appreciate it. Give us a follow, and we thank you in advance. Would you like to give a a breakdown of the episode? I like today? how you stopped saying brief, but I think this one will be um, somewhat brief. Okay, uh, it's a sort of light on plot. Uh, this episode opens in Usagi's bedroom in the morning on the start of a two-day weekend. Mm. Wow. Two whole days in the weekend. <laughs> and Luna is waking up and she wants Usagi to train to be a princess. And she tells her so. But it turns out Usagi's not in her bed. Yeah. She and the family are gone. They've already left on a trip to the hot springs. Mm-hmm. And they left a huge pile of food in Luna's bowl. Yes. Which... I don't know a lot about Japanese uh, cat food brands, but no. it's all colorful, like Fruit Loops. I'm guessing it's just because it's a cartoon. I don't know for a fact, but that's just <laughs> my guess. Like, let's make livers. it colorful. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot to cat poops. I like to see that. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like Luna's slacking off to you. I mean, she seems like she slept in, doesn't it? Seems like she's sleeping a lot. Yeah. She's um, on the kontatsu a lot. Uh, kotatsu. Uh, she's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe having another cat around. is. I was going to say, maybe she she's gone a little lax since Artemis showed up. Yeah. Well, anyway, just an observation. Uh, yeah. They'll be back tomorrow. And Usagi says that she'll bring some hot springs manju. Yes. Um which I have a general idea what, what that is, but uh, we'll talk, we'll talk about, about it later. Yeah. Uh, Usagi's family is on their way to Lake Yokai. Ghost Lake? Uh, That's yeah. a little rough. Yeah, right? <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, I know, right? We got a nice cabin up there. <laughs> it's going to be great. There, no trepidation whatsoever. No. It used this to be a camp, but go. they had to shut it down. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Usagi and Shingo are fighting over a Game Boy in the back seat, which yep. is very Japanese, but was probably is very American. I have a few fights over Game Boys at this time. Yeah, sure. Same time as this. Uh, and it's Shingo! Yeah, I know, right? At this point, I, seen they're not really time. predictions, are they? <laughs> really, like just I last mean, episode, I was like, where is this kid? Well, where is her family? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, Shingo was a bigger part of it are. earlier on. Yes. So I don't know if like they're just, maybe they're just one episode behind for realizing that they need to reintroduce these elements. Right. But it's always like one episode past, or maybe it's just, it comes at the exact right time. Maybe. I'm thirsting for some Shingo action. Here it <laughs> now is. Now you got it. Yep. Yep. Uh, as they're struggling over this Game Boy, her star locket falls out of her jacket, and Usagi is worried that it's going to break. Mm-hmm. But her dad is like, oh, oh, what? Did a boy give that to you? And Usagi's like, Oh, well, yeah, in a way. And her dad's like, what? Are you seeing a boy behind my, my back? Yes. The car is swerving all over the road. It's a little weird. Yeah. Also, I noticed that the Tsukino's car is a left-hand drive. But it would be right-hand drive in Japan, wouldn't it? In fact, you do see them driving on the left side of the road. So it must be a foreign car. Uh, it, yes. They do have – so there are Japanese cars where um, the uh, – in Japan where the uh, – the driving console is is on the right hand side, and I think that's the most common. However, they do have foreign cars over there as well, where the driver's side is on the left. It kind of looks like a Volvo, which would totally be Mr. Sakino's speed. <laughs> I could see that's that too. Going. Yeah, yeah. They absolutely. get to the springs in the mountains, and everyone's impressed. Uh, Dad says that this is where he and Mom first met. Mm-hmm. Musagi is taking in the view, and her music locket starts playing its song, and she thinks, Mamoru-san. Yes. We cut to the bottom of the lake that they're looking at, and Mm -hmm. we see something stir in the mud. Yes. And it reminds me of the police song, Synchronicity 2. Oh. Gather round, children. It's a song about a uh, man's frustration with his 
uh, domestic life. Uh-huh. And so it tells this story about this horrible day. He's got to go and rush hour traffic. You know, first it starts with a very unhappy breakfast and the kid hates the parents and the mom won't look at the dad. And he goes and he has his, uh, his unfulfilling job and mm-hmm. his asshole boss and all that. And then he's going to drive home. And then every verse is intercut with this imagery of something you know, crawling out of the mud at the bottom of this, oh, this weird. dark Scottish lock. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So that's not really what this is, but that's just no, that, that but immediately I get reminded the me yeah. of that. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the Dark Kingdom where Beryl and Kunzite are also looking at the same lake mm-hmm. on their evil projector. <laughs> and Beryl asks uh, is if this is the lake where Kunzite detected abnormal energy. Yeah. And he says, yes. And the energy is similar to our monsters. It's very powerful. Mm-hmm. And Beryl orders Endymion to go check it out, and he disappears. Kunzai uses this moment to ask Beryl, uh, do you think he's going to, like, realize that his memory has been erased? Uh-huh. And Beryl says, uh, I don't think so. I doubt it. But in just in case, you follow him on this job, and you keep an eye on him. Yeah. At the spring, the Tsukinos are enjoying the waters. Uh, Shingo is not excited that it's a mixed gender hot spring, and I'm on his side for this one. Uh, Usagi pushes him in the water. He steals her towel. It gets weird. Yeah. Uh, Shingo is looking out over the lake, and he says, hey, I see somebody down there on the shore. And Usagi looks, too, and she sees Mamoru? Yeah. She quickly gets dressed. She runs down to the lake shore. She doesn't see him, but she does see a statue. Mm-hmm. More on that in a second. Yep. Her music box starts playing again, and someone comes up behind her, and it's Mamoru. Yeah. And he's like, why does this melody stir my heart? Yes. And she's like, Mamoru, it's me, Usagi. And he's like, Mamoru, Usagi, these names mean nothing to me. Just then, Usagi's mom is coming down the path, and when Usagi looks back, Mamoru is gone. And the mom says... Oh, were you looking at the legend of the lover's statue? Yes. It's an ancient tale about this lake. A man fell in love with an angel that fell from the heavens, but another woman that was in love with him also was consumed by jealousy. She turned into a monster. Yes. The angel and the young man sealed the monster in the lake with the power of their love. Mm-hmm. And then they died and went to heaven. The end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they start to head back uh, to the uh, resort, and Mom says, you know, if you ever fall in love with a boy... Bring him home, and you can introduce him to me and Dad, okay? And mm-hmm. Usagi says, I will. Yeah. One day. Yeah, right. And as they leave, Mamoru appears again uh, on the lake shore, and he says, hmm, a monster sealed in the lake. Could that be the source of the energy? Mm-hmm. And we see this whole time that, like, Kunzite is, you know, watching him. He's floating yeah. up in the air far away. And Mamoru calls out, hear me, bitter soul trapped in this lake. I command you to return to life. And it does. I know. A green snake lady springs out of the lake and cries, give him back. Yeah. Uh, It seems like she's going to attack Mamoru, but instead she flies up and spots Usagi, Mm -hmm. who has similar hair to the statue angel. I think think that's what they're suggesting, although I did not see that from what we see in the depiction of the statue, but whatever. either, but they kind of focus in on her uh, dango buns. And she flies off to attack her. Uh, Usagi is with her family, and her dad's like, hey, you, you okay? And Usagi's like... Oh, I'm, I'm just admiring the moon. It's so pretty. Uh, I think I'll soak in the hot spa and look at the moon before dinner. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Of course, she's running off to try and find Mamoru again. Mm-hmm. And she's she's not happy, but she wants to reach Mamoru somehow. Just then, give him back. Yes. Yoma appears behind Usagi. Her family is like, what is that? <laughs> An appropriate reaction. The Yoma blasts pond scum from its mouth. Yes. And it sort of like withers the trees that it hits. Yes. And Usagi says, you ruined our family trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, that's what's important. Yeah. And right. uh, dad grabs a tree branch and he's like, I'll take care of this. But uh, maybe a little speak too soon. Yeah. Uh, the monster grabs him by the throat and it looks bad. And Usagi is trapped. She has no choice. She starts to shout, moon. Yes. But a black rose cuts through the air. An evil tuxedo mask is there. Yes. And Shingo's like, who's this weirdo? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just so crazy. And tuxedo mask says, uh, I won't let you hurt these innocents. And Usagi and her family start to leave. And Usagi thinks, I, I want to help him, but I, I can't transform mm. here. Mm-hmm. It's a Peter Parker moment. It, it is. And the, I thought the same thing. The Yoma smashes TM with its tail and he falls to the ground and it looks bad. But mm-hmm. this show is nothing but last minute. Uh, rescues. Yeah. And yeah, here's some Sailor Venus, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Mercury. Yeah. And Shingo's like, 
wow, it's the pretty guardians who fight for love and justice. <laughs> and Usagi's like, that's, that's my catchphrase. I know. But he knows them. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. got they got a rep. Yeah. Uh, Mercury uses Shabon spray and under the cover of the fog, Usagi transforms into Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. And she says, over here, demon. Yes. I won't forgive you for attacking tourists and ruining Usagi's happy family time. Yeah. In the name of the moon, I'll punish you. Yes. Uh, she also says, uh, you know, tuxedo mask, you protected Usagi. You're a good person. Just then, the Yoma tries to smash Usagi, but we get a crescent beam combined with a supreme thunder. Awesome. And an electro beam. Yes. That completely disintegrates the Yoma. Mm-hmm. But the Yoma reconstitutes itself mm-hmm. from ash. Yes. And the girls are like, uh, uh that, that hasn't happened before. <laughs> and Usagi's like, all right, blast from the past. Moon tiara action. Yes. Hits the monster, which explodes, but again, puts itself back together. And Ray. Finally, for like a dozen episodes, yeah, oh, maybe half a dozen, finally does something. She says, this isn't a Yoma, it's a yokai, born out of years of jealousy. Yes. I have to do Ghostbuster crap to it. <laughs> and she whips out an Ofuda. Yes. And she says the Kujian and says, be exercised with holy fire. And she also just chases it with a fire soul, I guess, to make it go down easy. Right, right, uh, right. So it blasts the thing. <laughs> and then Usaki gives it a moon healing escalation. I thought we were killing it, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, and the creature refreshes into the spirit of the woman who was jealous. And she then yes. ascends to heaven. Yes. And as she does, she sees Tuxedo Mask and like waves to him. Yeah. It's like a weird little moment. It, it is. And he's like, all right. But maybe it's a parallel to the idea that like, you know, she can be released from evil and so he can too, maybe. I don't know. I'm not I sure what she's seeing. Maybe or, or or maybe like if he had not released her from the lake, she would not have been healed and would not have gone to to heaven. Like she would have been That's trapped in the lake. That's and, a lot to track. Yeah, it's a lot to track. Yeah. I, I think maybe 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 both. You know what I mean? Um, or she was consumed with jealousy of a man, but um, a, a, man a man was able to help right, man. save her what? in a way. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a complicated moment that's not easy to discern. Maybe, you know, he's – well, he doesn't because he doesn't have his memories, but no. he too is has a lover that he can't be with or whatever. Well, th- that's another layer of possibility there. But... I feel like we're missing it, but – We've done a lot of work. We've done the legwork. Yeah. All right, whatever. Uh, Tuxedo Mask says to the girls, well, you didn't have to interfere, but uh, everything worked (laughs) out. So I'll let it go this time. Mm -hmm. Later. And Mm -hmm. he takes off. And Kunzite has been watching all of this and thinks, Demion, you're a weird guy. Yeah. You're a weird guy. Yeah. In the woods, Usagi's family is searching for her. And I think this is appropriate to ask, what do they think happened they were attacked uh, yeah. by a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, are we at, speaking of comic books, are we at a Marvel Universe level of infiltration of the weird into society now? Like, we know there's a Sailor V out there who stops right. bank robbers. Right. And then a Sailor Moon maybe does that, too, when she was wearing her purple costume. Right. But, like, oh, God, Galactus. Yeah, why relate really to work? Oh, Galactus is trying to eat, eat the planet again. Right. You know what I mean? Like the people in the Marvel Universe have to deal with the fact that aliens are real and that Doctor Doom could destroy Manhattan at any time. Are we have we reached that here? Like the people at at the at the at the, um, at the Red Man show. Yeah. Whatever, man. Uh they just they were all encased in mouse and they're like, Whoa, that show's amazing. Right, right, right. I really felt the tension. But they're attacked by a flying snake monster and yes. they're like, Oh, we're so glad you're okay. We heard that there are flying snake monsters at this lake. <laughs> Like, I don't think that they do. And and also, like, it's mentioned earlier that this is, like, this lake is where... uh, Lake Yokai? Yeah, is where (laughs) Papa and Mama Tsukino met. So it has a special place in their family history. But apparently they didn't... They they knew the, the story of the lovers, but apparently they didn't have... They didn't think that the monster was real or they thought it was just a folktale. I don't know. It is. So... And they're like, oh... Well, look at that. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> why would that be the reaction? I think it's weird because I, I think in, in Dystokyo, as you've appropriately called it, um, I think that the people who live there should know and realize by now that monsters are real and are a real threat and to to their to their lives and everything around them. Yeah, it's a weird 
uh, but choice. But I think they forget. Yeah, because they it go to like so much forget. trouble to, like, for instance, we have a moment in this episode where Usagi is constrained by not being able to join the fight because she can't give away her identity. So they, right. they're thinking about that stuff. And we see that in a lot of episodes. I don't know what people think about the fact that, uh, you know, a giant tower appeared by the bay that was never there right. before. Right. Or, or um, Nephrite's church. Right. Or, um, Which seemed like it was kind of in the woods somewhere. Or a bunch of clay cop statues at the airport. Yeah. Which, you know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. Weird things happen, sure. But we go through so much trouble to have Usagi protect her identity and then a giant snake monster appears and everybody's like, that's weird. And then it just they forget about it. Right. And like that's more glaring than – I know that if they learned that she was Sailor Moon, we would have more things to deal with in the yes. show. But that would almost make more sense than just, well, we were attacked by a crazy right. ghost monster. But right. yeah, it's fine. Well, I think it's interesting too, like her dad notes at one point after she talks about the moon and she, she runs away that like she seems more mature in some ways, but he doesn't really know what's going on with her. <laughs> yeah. So he senses a change in her, but he can't put his finger on it and he Better doesn't be really, and he, right. And he doesn't like really, he asks her if everything's okay, but he doesn't really push her and he, he doesn't, you know. He, he doesn't investigate really further. Well, he should ask what that monster was. Yes. Uh, yes he <laughs> Usagi uh, appears to her family and she's safe and sound. And she thinks, um, dad risked his life for me and mom is so kind. And Shingo's okay. Uh, I love my family. <laughs> I love them. And a little later, all the girls are enjoying the hot springs. Yes. And Mako says, you know, cheer up, Usagi. There's still a chance that we could you know, find Mamoru. Yeah. And Usagi says, you know, I'm happy to have such... Wonderful friends. But wait a minute. How did you guys know how to find me? Mm -hmm. And they say, Luna told us, and we didn't want you to have all the fun. <laughs> and then they try to drown her, but in a fun way. <laughs> I, feel like these I, I feel like these episodes' buttons are getting kind of weaker and weaker. Yeah. Or maybe I mean, that's, if, if there's not much to draw from in the episode, you just have to do sort of a... I don't know. So I, I actually, I liked the ending of this. Um, I think it's a little weird that they're, they're, the way that they chose to play around with Usagi is by trying to drown her. I didn't really like <laughs> well, they were just, that it was part horseplay. of it. But, but I, I think they could have showed horseplay in a little bit of a different way. But right. I, I like that, that like, although there's horrible stuff going on and all this really seriousness, uh, Tuxedo Mask is evil and all this stuff, they're, they still find moments where they can try to have fun. Yeah, but so it's tacked on sometimes. And this is, it happens in all anime, but sometimes it's more motivated. Like at the end of, um, I should really remember their dumb Deke title, shouldn't I? Yeah. But the episode where, with Bunbo or whatever, where um, the, the boy... Is crushing, he's crushing on Ami. That's yeah, a death, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then at the end of the episode, like, he's got the photograph, but she gives him a different one. And he says, I'll be back, mm -hmm. you know, when, I, um, when I'm as smart as you. Which yeah. Which is weird. But, uh, and he takes off. And then we see, like, oh, it's a nice photo of her. Like, that's a good button. Or even, yeah, this is kind of saying. like stock. But, like, it's a, it's a Mako episode. And she's almost destroyed by, you know, her crush on this weird person or whatever. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, thank God we took care of that. And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm all better now. Who's that guy? And everybody goes, oh, no. Oh, like the last like one with the ice skating solid. one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But recently we've had saying. a couple where it's just like, well, it's almost done. Can we dig up a comedy bit out of this? <laughs> oh, Usagi fell down into a piece of food. Uh, oh, we've had a couple like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. But this episode does go out on a new song, or at least one that I, I don't remember hearing It before. is a new song. Yes. Uh, and it's called Don't Just Dream. Or Yume yes. Miru uh, Dake Ja Dame. Yes. Nailed it. You got it. And it is, um, it's an image song. It's Usagi's yes. image song. And I was not familiar with uh, the concept of an image song, um, but it's just a song that's, you know, written for and about the character, often performed by the voice actor that does yes. the character, and it's supposed to capture their personality. Yes. And, and this song was sung by uh, Usagi's voice actress, Neat. Uh, Kotono uh Mitsuishi. It's a fun song. I don't know if it captures Usagi's character, but it definitely captures the character of Huey Lewis and the News. <laughs> it's got a little. Bum, eh, bum, me, da, hey, da, hey. Da, bum, bum, she da, says. Da, 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 she da. says "wow" in it a lot. I don't know if you looked at the lyrics, but she says "wow" in English like a lot, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and like one of the lines is like translated like maybe I'm in love or something like that. Anyway, the it's 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 fun. 
Um, I don't know that it necessarily really goes with this moment, but um, I I think it's kind of trying to be kind of hopeful for the future is kind of what I get out of it. But yeah. <laughs> yes. Your Honor, the courtroom is a crucible. In it, we burn away irrelevancies until we are left with a pure product, the truth, for all time. Oh, man, this is so intense. Data is on trial for his life. I know. This episode, The Measure of a Man, is based on the Supreme Court's Dred Scott decision of 1857. And every week on Backtracking, we take a look at the real-world events that inspired classic Star Trek episodes. Sorry. Shut up! Who are you? We're the hosts of Backtracking. I'm Caliban. You will both be taken to the brig and from there to the nearest star base, where you will answer charges for what you have done. And I'm Gooey Fame. This is not a game. This is life and death. You you follow us on Twitter. Backtracking is available wherever you listen to podcasts. You go f*** yourself. For Kyoro Kyorumiru, or Curiously Looking Around, where we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, I thought we would talk about hot springs or onsen in Japan. Onsen literally means hot water spring in Japanese. Due to being volcanically active, Japan has thousands of onsen throughout the country. Onsen can come in a lot of shapes and varieties, including outdoor, rotenburo, or notenburo, and indoor baths, which are called uh, uchiyu. Hmm. Onsen uh, may be either publicly run by a city or town or privately, typically as part of a hotel, ryokan, which again is a traditional inn, Mm -hmm. or uh, minshuku, which is a bed and breakfast. Right. Uh, Traditionally, onsen were placed outdoors, although today many ryokan have constructed indoor bathing spaces as well. Uh, today, as as most uh, households have their own baths, uh, the amount of traditional onsen has declined, but the amount of tourist onsen towns has grown. Onsen utilize naturally hot water from geothermically heated springs. Onsen vary from sento, which are the indoor public bathhouses in Japan, mm. where baths mm-hmm. are filled with hot tap water. Generally, onsen water is about 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and as stated by the hot springs law, which is rigorously enforced by the government, the water cannot be lower than 77 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, so it, what, do you do, what do you do if, I, I would imagine that depending on where they are, like they would stay liquid even throughout the winter, but they yeah. would definitely cool down. So what if you're like high on a mountain and it's the winter and it's like, 76 oh man that's a really good question Wait, I didn't shut it, shut it down that. shut it all down right right <laughs> i don't know what you do because it has it's heated geothermically you know it's heated from the <laughs> earth right, shoot a little right i didn't come across that in my research water, but water heater in maybe. there maybe um i as far as i know they don't do that but i don't know how do you keep it that would bring shame on them right exactly <laughs> Uh, It has long been believed that onsen water has an abundance of healing properties and is filled up with minerals that are perceived to be good for your circulation, your skin, and general health. Onsen are often located in areas of superb natural beauty and connected to exquisite ryokan, which amplifies their attraction. Some varieties of different kinds of onsen include natorium nusen, or sodium chloride onsen, Hmm. tetsu sen, or iron onsen, Iosen or sulfur onsen, tansan sen or hydrogen carbonate onsen, and tanzun sen or ordinary onsen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if 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 um, there are I guess diff- nineteen different minerals that an onsen, in order to be recognized as an onsen, you have to have at least one of them. Hmm. Uh, and if you have like one of these specific kinds, the the uh, the establishment will advertise like this is the kind of onsen that we are. This is our flavor, right? Exactly. Uh, at both an onsen and a sento, all visitors are supposed to thoroughly wash and rinse themselves before getting into the hot water. Bathing stations are set up with faucets, stools, wooden buckets, and toiletries such as shampoo and soap. Nearly all onsen also supply removable shower heads for bathing ease. 
Entering the onsen while still unwashed or with trace amounts of soap on your person is socially unacceptable. <laughs> you will get called out. Like, th- this stuff is is enforced. This uh, guy's got soap on him. Right, exactly. Get out. You get out of here. <laughs> Uh, traditionally, women and men bathed together at both onsen and sentos, but since the opening of the West during the Meiji Restoration, which would have been specifically sometime between 1853 and 1867, 1853 is when the opening of the West began, right. uh, gender separation was implemented. Mixed bathing, or konyoku, continues at some special onsen in rural areas of Japan, which usually also gives the choice of separate women-only baths or distinct hours for men and women. There are a lot of ryokan where the guest rooms have private motenburo baths, which are the outdoor baths, um, attached, and these tend to be more expensive rooms. And in some ryokan, the public onsen are available for private party use upon request. Hmm. You are not permitted to wear anything in an onsen, No swimwear, underwear, or towels should ever touch the water. Just your nude body. We see the... (laughs) You you must go wild. Right. We see the Tsukinos and the Senshi wearing towels when they bathe, which they did most likely because this is a TV show and they did not want to show them nude. Yeah, I'm imagining there were some uh, Deke version cuts. Um, There weren't, actually. (laughs) We'll we'll get to that. Um, uh. Typically, the staff gives visitors small towels, which tend to be between the size of a washcloth and a hand towel, which you can utilize to ineffectively cover up as much of you as feasible as you go into the bathing area after you have unclothed. And um, you can hold that towel while you are in the hot water. It is also common to fold it and put it on top of your head and mop your face with it if the steam gets too hot. But one should never immerse it in the water itself. So, so uh, hmm. what? Uh, it's just so weird. I I think it's 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 a, a contamination thing. Like it's harder to you're, clean you're the water. Your entire bu- you, you're putting your butt in there, and then however mm-hmm. many snow monkey butts were in there. Right, I know. Uh, so what? Who cares? Like, is it the detergent that they clean the towels with? Like they don't. I think it's like specific like, chemicals, maybe specific chemicals. It seems and I'm like, also thinking like, like fibers of the towel. Mm, you know what I mean? Your hair, everything is in there. Well, they, they, they don't want you to keep your hair in there either. Oh. So, so that's what I was actually going to get to. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have long hair, make oh, sure you put they must, it They up. must have to skim the hot spray. I think they have to. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so it does not get in the water. This is probably why we see that Usagi has her pigtails put up while uh, while Mama, Tsukino, Rei, and Minako all have towels on their heads to keep their hair out of the water. Right. You should also abstain from putting your head underwater as there is constantly a small possibility that shared water may carry infection and putting your head underwater enhances your risk of getting something. Plus, like, sulfur eye is not something that you probably want. I, I don't think so. Yeah. Um... Onsen are are quiet locations. The Japanese generally utilize them to unwind and ruminate. Uh, There's very little talking amidst visitors and entirely no selfie taking. (laughs) In fact, it is best if you leave your phone in the dressing area with the rest of your belongings. Uh, Just not a good idea. Yeah. um, I I don't want my naked body in your photos either. Well, they've been into like... Uh, you know, they had camera phones before we did. So yes. I bet this rule came up a, a good good amount of years ago now. Yes. <laughs> They're yes. like, oh, no, no, we got to have a thing for this. Yeah, exactly. No towels, no camera phones. <laughs> um, by 2015, 56% of onsen operators had prohibited guests with tattoos from utilizing their space. Mm. The initial reason for this was to keep out the Yakuza. That's so, yeah. 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 Have we talked about tattoos before? Um... No, I don't think we have. Okay. Um, no, I mean, maybe we can save it for a future show. But yeah. It's so, so... The, the, the Yakuza, I mean, do we need to explain who the what the Yakuza are? It's, it's basically gangsters, gangsters in yeah. Japan. Um, and they, they tend to have a lot of tattoos. I need one of those um, Predator um, memes with, uh, you know, Arnold and Carl Weathers' hands yeah. clasping, you know, and then one bicep is like Japanese people, and one bicep is Jewish people, and then their fists are like, no tattoos. <laughs> Uh, yes. I'm going to make uh, that right now. Okay. All right. That keep, sounds keep good. Keep talking. Um, 
However, tattoo-friendly onsen can be found, with, especially with the growth of foreign guests due to an increase in tourism. Some onsen that formerly prohibited tattoos are slackening their regulations to allow customers with little tattoos to enter on condition that they cover their tattoos with a sticking plaster or a patch. That's weird. Yeah, they just don't, they don't want you displaying it. So Just put your, <laughs> put your birth control patch over it. We'll be fine. <laughs> um, it's so, I can just see that because, like, the Japanese are just so, just so offended by some things. And I could, uh, clearly, you just, you have to let everybody in if you want to make money, right? Yeah. But I can I see think me they, like, well, I don't want their money. <laughs> yes. Tattoo people. Yes. Well, I think, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not exactly sure what, why they decided – they just decided they didn't want Yakuza there. And I'm not sure why that was specifically. They just don't want to be associated with them, I guess. Yeah. Um. So they just decided we don't want people like you here. So this is how we'll <laughs> like deal with you. it. Yeah, I Somebody know. Somebody who really has offensive. a tattoo of, yeah, of Tweety I know, Bird. Right? Obviously, what there, a gangster. there are people – <laughs> The Looney Tunes gang. Well, I mean, I think that there are definitely people in Japan who are Japanese who have tattoos who are not Yakuza. Yeah, of, of, yeah obviously. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've seen – Maybe yeah. not. No, there are. Maybe all the – all there... the all the tattoo parlors are just you have to be jumped into no, the yakuza. When we were, um, how many fingers do they have? Oh, stop it. Um, when we were talking about uh, hair salons, uh, there's actually I, I know specifically there's a there's a barber shop in like uh, I think Tokyo or somewhere. Anyways, there there's a barber there. He's trying to make barber shops cool again, and he, <laughs> he's a Japanese guy, and he's got a lot of tattoos, and um, you know they're they're trying to make it like a cool place to hang out and smoke and like talk about stuff. And you know what I mean. Yeah, hang out and do whatever. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> True. So, anyways. again. <laughs> um, well, I think like he thinks that, that that a lot of people in Japan don't think that barbershops are really cool. They think they're kind of like for old people. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. You mean right people? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no. Um, I, I I mean I don't know if he thinks barbershops, but <laughs> cool. They're cool. Um, well, I mean, I guess, I don't know. He's he's trying to make it a cool place to want to go and hang out and that sort of thing. Okay. More um, power to him. Yeah. So I actually have a little bit of a story that goes along with this. Um, I have never been to an onsen, but I have been to a sento, a public bathhouse. Mm. Um, this was while I was in Japan in college and a group of us uh, from my school went on a weekend trip to a different city where we all stayed with the host families. We had the evening free to hang out with our host families, and my host family had two young girls around my age. One of them decided we should go to a public bathhouse. I turned pale, but shortly thereafter, we were on our way. Is this what? Uh, hey, it's Friday night. I what, I think what do we, they were what do you guys just like do? thinking about like some what can we do? Movie, that's like, mini golf, public, public nudity. Bathhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's the one. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I bathed quickly and tried to stretch my very small towel to cover the front of my body as much as possible, which would, did not really work. Uh, as the only foreigner there, I got a lot of stares. Um, I followed my host family from bath to bath. There's like lots of different baths set up at this uh, particular bathhouse. I think that's how most of them are set up. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and we were separated from um, the men. And, and they hated your tattoos. Yeah, right. Because I have so many. I don't the, have any the tattoos. The big minotaur on your back. <laughs> uh, and once submerged, I did my best to relax and try to enjoy the experience. We also went into the sauna before we left. Uh, and it definitely is an experience that I will never forget. Um, I would actually like to go to an onsen someday, though. I think that would be kind of fun. So. A, lot, a lot of tan lines, probably, too. Yeah. Because they don't really do the, the nude beach thing. No. It's like, well, you could be absolutely naked within this bathhouse. Yes, yes. In yes, here. Yes, exactly. Not out not there. Not out there. Yeah. You know, if they were really into enforcing nudity, everybody would have to uh, wear socks. What? <laughs> I know. There's a new thing going around, which I mean, it's cyclical, but uh, somebody, you know, created a meme about how, you know, you've, you're more naked when you have socks on than just being totally naked. <laughs> what? That makes no sense to Try me. Try it out. Try it out later. Don't I think go it home, would, take your clothes off, feel weird. accept your socks. And that be would like, feel weird. I feel really naked right now. Yeah, I guess I can get it. That <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, not being able to feel the ground. Kind of kind of weird when yeah, the rest of you is all naked. But anyways, 
Uh, moving or a on. hat. Put a hat on. Put a hat on? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that would do that it, That would too. be the most naked, I think. Yeah, either either ends of your body <laughs> being covered. Uh, so moving on to each Takimasu with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? Uh, cat food. Well. Got to talk about rainbow well, cat food. There, there, there's rainbow cat food, which I don't really get. I think, again, it's just an, an, an anime choice. Yeah. Um, but Usagi says in a note to Luna, quote, I'll bring back hot springs manju for you. End yeah. quote. Yeah. So manju is a wagashi or a traditional Japanese confectionery. Uh, there are a lot of variations of manju, but most have an exterior assembled from flour, rice flour, buckwheat, and kuzuko, which is a starch from the roots of the kudzu plant, and are filled Whoa. with yeah, uh, it's it's a flowering plant, um, and are filled with anko or azuki bean paste. They're like filled. Yes. Okay. Yeah, all, all manju are filled. The most common stuffing for manju is anko, which has several variations, including subuan, which is the chunky red bean paste, and koishian, which is the fine red bean paste. And um, a- another variation is uh, subushian, which is between uh, subuan and, and koishian in texture. Mm-hmm. Um, manju is occasionally made with other fillings such as uh, shiroan, which is a bean paste made with white kidney beans, uh, igusian bean paste made with peas, chestnut paste, chestnut jam, sesame paste, miso bean paste, matcha bean paste, etc. Is the chestnut jam sweet or is it just, you know kind of blandly savory like a chestnut gun. Um, I think it is I've never had it before um, I think it's sweet that's just my my gut okay. instinct um, is that it's it's sweet as well as the the chestnut paste mm. I know for for azuki beans it's it's sweet like there is like um, usually some sort of sugar added to the you know the it, it, some, is it fermented um no um, it's, it's, so it's like azuki beans, beans is a kind of, it's a kind sugar. of red bean. Sugar bean. Yeah. And you, you, you just add, you add, um, a sugar to it. Huh. Oh. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not, it's not fermented. Um, uh, so there are, there are two major, two major types of manju. There's steamed manju, which is the more traditional variety and baked manju. Uh, there are infinite regional variations with diverse sizes, shapes, and fillings with regional flair. Mm. Um, Matsuri, which are festivals and special events, also often create their own variety of manju. Uh, There are also savory variations of manju that are filled with fish or meat. They can often be found at kombini or street vendors. In 1341, a Japanese envoy returned from China and brought back the Chinese manteau with him. A manteau is a steamed, unfilled, or meat-filled roll. At the time in Japan, Buddhism prohibited the eating of meat, so manju were mostly vegetarian. Uh, so the so this is where manju came from. Uh, the Chinese character for manto, which was what was brought over, is read as manju in Japanese. Okay. Uh, manju is the least expensive wagashi. It is also one of the most popular treats and is often eaten with tea. To talk specifically about what Usagi wrote to Luna in the episode, it is important to first understand the Japanese custom of omiyage. Omiyage is a souvenir or gift that you give to family, coworkers, and friends after you return home from a trip. Hmm. Omiyage are specifically connected to the traveler's destination. This is just the basic concept. We could and probably should talk about omiyage um, at some point on Kiro Kiro Miro. But it's like I'll get you a snow globe. Kind from, of from Dallas. right, right, but it has to have like a connection to to where you were. It's like the difference between like mochi and manju is like mochi is like actually pounded rice. Yes, but manju is like rice flour or like buckwheat flour. Yeah, I've heard it. So I've so seen one's it. like real sticky and thick, but a manju would have more of a cake like. Yes, consistency. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It it is more cake like. Um, it, I think it's hard to describe it exactly because, like, you you look at like the the consistency of manju and like like the air bubbles are not necessarily as big as it is in cake, but it would right. be more similar to cake than it's a than, fig than mochi. Yeah, it's right. A big fig yeah, right, right. <laughs> kind of. Uh, so onsen onsen manju literally means hot spring steamed buns. The onsen manju is a steamed manju filled with anko. 
Onsen manju were traditionally made utilizing water from onsen or were cooked with steam from the onsen. But today, sweet steamed buns sold in hot spring tourist areas are typically sold as onsen manju. Mm -hmm. Apparently, when someone visits an onsen, it is very typical for one to say, quote, I'll buy some manju on my way back from the onsen. So <laughs> this is apparently a very typical thing to say. <laughs> it's a catchphrase. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's 104 is you're not going to get a lot of cooking done with uh, <laughs> 104. You need to be a lot hotter than that. Yeah, right. Well, but if they use the water like they in the They use the water in the preparation or they would use the steam <laughs> from it, it to cook it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going to get some. It's manju. I'm going back from the onsen. <laughs> I know. Learn that phrase in your book. Yeah, right? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, this is these aren't tattoos. It's a birthmark. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, my heart is a kaleidoscope where we talk about fashion and Sailor Moon. What the heck are they wearing? Uh, Shingo's street clothes, he is wearing a light green sweatshirt with, a light, with light yellow sleeves, a white button-up shirt underneath with the collar over the sweatshirt, and blue jeans. Mama Tsukino, her street clothes, she is wearing a light yellow turtleneck, a light purple button-up cardigan, and a long bright red skirt. Papa Tsukino is wearing um, a light blue button-up shirt with a brown v-neck sweater and light brown slacks. Some quick trivia, Nako Takauchi's parents are named Kenji and Ikuko, and her brother's name is Shingo, just like Usagi's family members. Uh -huh, yeah. Yes. Makes sense. And Takauchi's parents also owned and operated a local jewelry store like Naru's mom. <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting. Did Oh, and she worked at a temple. <laughs> yes. Was there a, a sensei that uh, spurned her? <laughs> Uh, I, I haven't come across that, but uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, she does put a lot of her life in it, but I get it. You know, write what you know, right? Yeah. Uh, so once at the hot springs, Mama Tsukino uh, in the hot springs, she is wearing a purple towel and she has a purple towel tied around her head like a headband. Mm -hmm. uh, Papu Tsukino is wearing a blue towel folded up on his head, which we talked about. Is it, You see this very, it's very common at Adolin Sun to see something like that. Um, Usagi is wearing a light pink towel and has her pigtails tied up in loops under her buns. Uh, later, we see Ami is wearing a light yellow towel, and we see Minako is wearing a turquoise towel, and she has a turquoise towel tied around her head like a headband. Uh, Ray is wearing a light blue towel, and she has a light blue towel, I can't say blue right now, <laughs> uh, around her head like a headband. Uh, and Mako is wearing a yellow towel. The Tsukino family at the hot springs are wearing a uh, yukata. A yukata is an informal summer kimono that is typically made out of cotton or synthetic fabric. And this is a, like and, a, they say it's a rustic spring. So I don't know if yeah. it means that it's old or if they're like traditional, like, here, we'll give you some uh, traditional, you know, summer kimonos or whatever. Well, it's very typical to wear... Uh, yukata at an onsen. They actually, ah. uh, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> do, people, do they disappear? What do you mean? <laughs> like how people go to like hotels and they like, oh, take, well, I like this robe. Um, take, I guess I wouldn't be robe. surprised if that happened, but you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and it, it also the yukata is not lined. Um, like like we were saying, most ryokan have a yukata for you to wear during your stay, and they are especially worn after bathing at an onsen. You may wear them inside and outside the ryokan, as well as traveling from onsen to onsen if you're staying in an onsen town. So onsen towns have lots of onsen that you can oh, go man. to. So, so, uh, <laughs> onsen, so you onsen, can, onsen. Yeah, right. Uh, and then they often give you uh, geta, which are the traditional wooden thong uh, sandals that are raised uh, yeah. that you can wear as well. Um, there are some Western-style hotels that also loan yukata to guests. However, the yukata at these establishments are only meant to be worn inside the hotel room. So don't make that mistake. Oh, don't go in the woods and wander around. Yeah, not if you're staying at a Western-style hotel mm. and they give you a yukata. If you go to a real con, you can wear the yukata outside. Oh, okay. and yeah. So, yeah, it, it's a little bit of a difference there. <sighs> Those rules. I know. Uh, yukata means bathing cloth in Japanese. Although yukata were traditionally worn as bathrobes, Yukata are now commonly worn at outdoor summer events such as matsuri and hanabi or fireworks displays. 
Uh, customarily, yukata were typically made of indigo dyed cloth or indigo dyed cotton cloth. Mm. Uh, but today, an extensive variation of designs and colors are available, and I'm sure we will talk even more about yukata um, later. It'll sure. come up again. So um, that's just a, a little bit of a taste. A uh, little bit more that you should know. When you wear a yukata or kimono, you must always put the left side over the right. Wearing a kimono right over left is reserved for the dead. <laughs> uh, so don't make that mistake. I, I learned that very early on when I was uh, studying about Japan. Um, one also needs to make sure that the hemline on both sides of the yukata or kimono are level with each other and that the lower part is not open. The Tsukino Onsen Yukata outfit, uh, the yukata is aqua with a white trim along the opening. Uh, the fin o- obi, which is the tie, uh, is black. Uh, the brown jacket with black fabric around the opening is called a haori. A haori is a traditional hip length or thigh length kimono style jacket. Mm-hmm. They are also wearing some side kind of sandals. From what I could tell, it didn't look like they were geta. Um, mm. Mamoru is his streetwear. He's wearing a black motorcycle jacket and black slacks, both of which look slightly blue when the light reflects off of them. Uh, The yokai, after she was turned back into a human, was wearing a juni hitoe, which means 12 layers in Japanese. (laughs) And is, yeah, and it is a form of court dress initially worn during the Heian period, which was 794 to 1185. Okay. By aristocratic women and ladies in waiting at the Japanese imperial court. Sure. Tale of Genji. Yeah, exactly. The Tale of Genji, exactly. Uh, the Juni Hitoe actually varies in its precise number of layers and is made up of multiple different kimono style garments. The Jino Hitoe today is sometimes worn by a handful of people for ceremonial occasions, but you do not see it very often. Hmm. The various pieces were all made out of silk. The innermost article of clothing is made of white silk, followed by multiple layers, uh, other layers, and a final layer of the outfit is typically a coat. Uh, Juni Hitoe were originally a lot more layers, and the total mass of the layers of garments could total as much as 20 kilograms. Oh, That's geez. a little over 44 pounds. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. So uh, it really, they had to, a specific way that they had to, to walk and move when they were wearing these Yeah, outfits. don't fall over. Yeah, exactly. Um, there are names for all the different types of garments, but it is difficult to discern from what we see in this episode which layer is what. Um, but uh, we do see that she has a bright red robe that is visible just towards the bottom of her outfit. On top of that is a light pink layer that is barely showing and a pink robe on top of that. Uh, it is tied in the center with a gold sash, and she is wearing a light green coat over that. Hmm. She also appears to have a gold sash or ribbon coming out of both of her large sleeves, and she is wearing a metal or stiff gold headband with two points pointing upwards. Wow. Was she, like, rich? Um, I don't know. I think we can discern that she was probably part of the Heian court. So she was either, um, you know, um, an aristocrat, so she was either rich, rich or she was somebody who served an aristocrat directly like a lady in waiting back when it was called just uh regular lake <laughs> yeah and right then, like whoa it didn't there's get the a snake ghost lake. buried in there yeah right what about yokai lake <laughs> yeah we'll change it <laughs> we want people to know this yeah. lake is haunted don't swim in this lake mm-hmm. springs are fine yeah exactly all right so villain gauge where you rate a baddie one to five dark stars five being the most wicked uh, this episode, uh, is, we don't have a Yoma this week, but a Yokai. Right. Unfortunately, she does not have a name. Uh, so what do we know about the Yokai? According to the legend that Mama Tsukino tells Usagi, she was a human woman who was also in love with a male lover. In a fit of jealous rage, she turned into a monster. We learn from Rei that she was not a Yoma, but a, quote, an evil Yokai born from years of suppressed jealousy, end quote. Right. So, well, and also being like buried in yes, a lake. In a lake, yes. Was she jealous really before? <laughs> what, what were the many years? For many years, she watched these two kids get it on, and then she was like, 
we don't really get a sense of time. No, I'm evil. You know what I mean? Like how much time passed when the lovers were in love that how long did this transformation take? You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't really get a it's sense of It's a little of that. sketchy, but. Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Hanya are, are female demons or Kijo who were at one time human women who were consumed by jealousy and Ooh. changed into demonesses. Okay. There are three categories of Hanya, uh, Namanari, Chunari, and Honnari. Uh, Namanari Hanya are Kijo that still look like human women. Uh, they have little horns and use dark sorcery to execute their evil acts. Hmm. They are not entirely evil. There is a possibility for these novice Kijo to go back to humanity. Uh, Chunari Hanya are mid-level Kijo. <laughs> 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 yeah, right, like middle management. Right. Uh, they have lengthy, sharp horns, long fangs that are almost like tusks, and strong, sor stronger sorcery. However, they are still susceptible to Buddhist prayers. Honanari Hanya are true demons and the strongest of the three. They have snake-like bodies and breathe fire. Honanari Hanya have welcomed their jealousy so profoundly that they are, there is no appeasing their vehemence. So our yokai is a Honanari Hanya, the most far gone of the three types. So it is really something that Rei is able to save her soul and help her go to heaven. The, the name Hanya also refers to a specific type of demon mask utilized in no theater. Huh. The Hanya mask portrays a jealous Kijo. It has metallic eyes, two sharp bull-like horns, and a sneering mouth with lots of teeth. I'm sure you've seen this um, at yes, some point. Yes, I think so. Uh, the name Hanya is a Sino-Japanese word for wisdom. The most likely explanation for this mask receiving this name is because it is the name of an artist monk, Hanya Bo, who is said to have perfected its design. So it's most likely named after him oh, and okay. not like, this is wisdom. This you know what demon. I mean? So, so wise. Right. Right, exactly. A uh, little dissonance there. But uh, the, the Hanya mask is said to be devilish and threatening, but also sor sorrowful and tortured. The actor looks directly ahead. When the, when the actor looks directly ahead, the mask looks terrifying and enraged. When tilted slightly downwards, the mask looks sorrowful as though crying. Huh. So um, I think that's really interesting. And when he turns to the side, it's a woman. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the other side... It's a vase. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I got a vibe off of this too. There is a um, a mythological creature um, in the Buddhist and like Hindu, I think Jainism um, traditions yeah. as well, called the Naga, which is a oh. half half human, half cobra. Interesting. And they can be, um, yeah, they can be a full snake, or they can be like a full human, or sort of half and half. And then they are um, okay. like dangerous, sometimes bad, but also sometimes. Um, like protecting or beneficial to people. Well, it's interesting because the the Hanya mask is actually um, supposed to ward off evil. Hmm. Um, so uh, it, 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 I don't know. I think it's interesting that it's um, then uh, the, the way it's portrayed and everything. Um, I, so when I was doing research, I know you've played the a couple of the Yakuza games. Yeah, there is a character in that who has a Hanya uh, tattoo. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> won't see him in the spring. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, you won't. There's also a mythological, uh, a Greek myth character called uh, Lamia, or Lamia, okay. who is uh, was a lover of Zeus and was cursed by Hera uh, to be a half snake, half woman. Interesting. And so, so this is something that you see. Well, a I think lot. yeah, I think misogyny runs through. All of cultures wow. historically, right. this snake woman, right? Uh, this jealous woman, enraged by her jealousy, yeah. turns into a demon, and so spurned by a lover or something. Yep. And yep. in some versions of the myth, she like killed her children as well. Um, Hera did. So wow. Lamia goes through. She you know attacks infants at night. Awesome. And so drinks their blood. Cool. Yep. That's really awesome. <laughs> so yeah, snake lady, not a new thing. Yeah. No, it's not a new thing. Uh, so what does our yokai look like? I, I really like her character design. It is very colorful and scary, I think. Um, 
Her, her torso and head are human-like, while the rest of her body is serpentine. The skin on her torso is light green. Her serpentine tail connects with her human torso just below her visible belly button. Her... <laughs> Which is, that's not how anything works. Yeah, but I, okay. right. I know, but whatever. <laughs> well, I guess snakes have a belly button at some point in their development, right? I don't know. They're, uh, I've never really looked at an underside of a snake for a belly button before. They're, uh, uh, wait, they're of... They're born from eggs. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, and they they must, well, they don't have a, they'd have an umbilical. Would they? I have no idea. I, I got no clue. I mean, they're not mammals. No, they're not. Oh, man, I'm too far out of biology for, <laughs> for this one. But they'd still need some kind of, um, you know, way to get... Um, like nutrients and nutrients sort of yeah in yeah. the uh in the egg so yeah. <sighs> uh, i can't i'm trying to look up snake belly button. okay i'm gonna do snakes have belly buttons do snakes have belly buttons reptiles grow inside the egg with an umbilical cord attached to the yolk just as we, as, as we are attached to a placenta okay her tail has a light yellow underbelly her outer scales are a purp- are purplish and she has light green fins standing up in the, the middle on the back of her tail. She also has several light green fins sticking out in a, a bundle at the end of her tail, as well as a couple fins where her tail meets her body. Right. She has a matching purplish scaly bra with no straps. Uh, she also has scales on her hands and arms that almost look like long fingerless gloves, <laughs> and which is pretty cool. And her and match her tail with a light yellow on the underside of her arms, purplish scales on top, and light green fins. Right. She has pointy webbed ears that almost look like bat wings. She has yellow eyes, very pointy fang-like teeth, long pink hair, most of which is bright pink, but her bangs and the front part of her hair are light pink, and she also has bright pink eyebrows and long pointy red fingernails. And vertical pupils. Yeah, that's true. Snake-like eyes. Yes. Yeah, uh, that, very good point. Um, I think it's really cool. I, I don't know how Mamoru is able to summon her, but he does. <laughs> I, I don't I, I got. I got no clue. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that, well, I have a theory about their connection which i've been working on oh. uh, all throughout this episode yeah uh I, maybe it does have to maybe they are connected because their situation is similar but not mm. specifically similar i think i did mention before that they uh that there is there is a there's a relationship a frustrated relationship involved yes and so he i don't know how he summons her either dark kingdom magic or maybe it's tinged with his unconscious feelings of being trapped presumably um you know, loving uh, being usagi. attracted to usagi yeah and so there is a longing there that is matched ah, in our nameless creature that would make sense and so there's a connection there that is immediately felt when he summons her and then she um you know she flies up and focuses on usagi because she, usagi is the recipient of this unconscious feeling that he has because mm-hmm. we do see him hear the melody and he says that melody affects my heart you know yes and going back not just to usagi but presumably to, to princess serenity yes and so that's what the ghost is sort of keying off of uh, okay. then they have yeah. their conflict and she is you know restored and she's ascending to heaven but it's she's also kind of feeling like i did it you know but but you could do it too you, know, I, sort of yeah, you can yeah. be free as well. I, I like that. I like the, the imagery that you're putting in there. But I had to go a long way to get that. That's true. Which is why I'm giving her a two. <laughs> oh my god! Pink and green snake lady. Come on, we can this is no wow. this is no barber pole woman. This is no you know, it's just it's pink and green snake lady, it's fine. Yeah, I guess. And like we had to puzzle over her intentions and stuff and I think it's cool. I don't know. Isn't this... Well, we'll get into that a little later, but I was not uh, blown away by okay. Creature Without a Name that wasn't worth naming. Wow. Um, well, I think it's interesting. All that she says is give him back, and you know she attacks with her tail a whole lot, um, <laughs> yeah. and that's her most effective thing. Um, she apparently can't die. That's kind of cool. That She can't die. I think <laughs> that's cool. Um, just some things to mention really quick. 
So uh, after Usagi transforms, she yells. She yells at the yokai Oni San Kochira while she's clapping her hands. That translates to this way, Oni. Um, it is a reference to what kids say and do as they when they clap their hands and sing it in a game of blind tag. Huh. So so the person who's it is blindfolded and they're the quote unquote Oni. And okay. they try to get their attention, and they're they, the the only the person who's it tries to get, who get you know tag somebody. And the, Marco Polo right. demon, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then the next person is is it, so okay. on and so forth. Um, Blind demons bluff, right? Um, some things really quick about uh, Kuro Taisan, which is raised power when she throws the Yofuda paper on an enemy. Yes. Uh, it is one of Ray's powers as a Miko, so she does not have to transform to utilize this power. Sure. So, uh, Akiro Taisan is a Japanese expression utilized to exercise or purify demons by any uh, of, of any evil, which means either, quote, evil spirit be gone or, quote, evil spirit be exercised. When Ray says the nine names of the Kuji um, as a sentence, it means, quote, all warriors have been lined up in formation here. Right. End quote. Um, while Ray is chanting the Kuji, we see snippets of a dark individual with a furious fanged face amongst fire bearing a sword and a lariat. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is probably the Buddhist deity uh, Fudo Myo'o, or the, quote, immovable one, un- end quote, who safeguards all living things by cleansing all hindrances and contamination with fire to let one reach enlightenment. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for looking out. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually, I know she doesn't have a name and everything, but I, I, I get, maybe because she's a, uh, a Hanya, I actually really liked this yokai, so I'm going to give her a four. Okay. Um, moving on to Sabu or Dabu, where we talk about the differences between the sub and the dub. Uh, in the dub, Usagi's name is Serena, Shingo's name is Sammy, and Umino's name is Melvin. Yeah. In in the scene in the dub and the scene of Luna waking up to discover that she is alone is cut. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, we don't get that opening scene at all. Then how do we? How do the sailors even find them at all? Then? I don't know that actually. I I have no idea. Deek. Uh, I know. It's a sloppy deek. It's a sloppy deek. Uh, in the the dub, the initial scene of Usagi and Shingo in the car fighting over the game is cut. They actually fight over it twice, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in the original, Usagi's dad is upset that she might have a boyfriend that he doesn't know about. In the dub, the initial part of the scene plays out similarly. However, Serena's mom, instead of telling her husband to watch the road, which seems really important, <laughs> uh, says that Serena most likely got the locket from Melvin. And then instantaneously, Serena's dad was happy, which oh. makes <laughs> no sense to me. No, I kind of like that he likes Melvin. Yeah, okay. He's like, oh, is that from that Melvin boy? Oh, that, oh he's nice. But the, I feel like... like <laughs> <laughs> like Serena or Usagi would object to that, but apparently, you know. Um, well, she can't tell the truth. Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah, that kind of changes that. Um, in uh, the the dub, um, Sammy doesn't want to get into the onsen with his family because it smells like sulfur. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's not about mixed bathing. Right. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing that was changed about the, the onsen scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sailor Mars uh, Akuro Tyson was changed to Mars Fireball Charge. They just love changing the names of their, their powers. Sure. Uh, in the original, the the uh, the end of the episode, uh, the, the song uh, Yume Miru Dake Ja Dame, um, which we talked about, translates to Just Dreaming is No Good. Um, there, there did not include a song in the dub, so there's just no song. Is it like quiet, or did they just put? They must have put something under it. Just uh, it, it, stock music, maybe just stock music. Yeah. But but there's no there's nobody singing, um, whatever. which kind of changes it. But you know whatever. Uh, now we are up to our wrap up, uh, where we rate the episode one to five roses. Uh, I like that we get to spend some more time with the rest of the Tsukino family, who honestly I wish we saw more of. Um, we get Usagi confronting Mamoru to remember her and who he is. And then we get a great scene, I think mostly great scene, at the end with the senshi goofing around in the onsen, which I, I actually really liked. Um, I found myself actually, even though this is a filler episode, I actually really enjoyed this episode more than I, I thought that I would. Um, so I'm actually going to give it a four out of five roses. 
<sighs> wow. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I respect your decision. <laughs> I had a feeling you would say something like that. But uh, I uh, I don't agree with it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a two for me. Wow. I don't a know. Two. I'm just in a bad mood, maybe. But uh, there's just not... We, we've talked about... we've t- Every week we talk about this. There are six episodes left mm-hmm. before the final know, uh, apocalypse comes and we're just hanging we're we're doing a sequel to the summer that beats youth and ghosts like this is just yeah pretty much yes this is youth in the winter yeah i know <laughs> at a spring yeah yeah uh that's just all we're doing and i i don't know i mean yeah i, I complained about not seeing the family and then we finally see the family but i just feel like they didn't they just kind of brought him in to like confirm i love they're my family here. yeah and I see what they're you're dum-dums who don't know that i'm sailor moon still and um so i don't know i just thought it was, was kind of weak i mean i get what you're saying maybe maybe it would be um better if it came at a different point in the series like um because we have so much at stake and we're almost at the end of the season like maybe they should have done more to actually push the conflict forward. Yeah, you know what I mean? and we've talked about how the series was put together um, quickly because they were like, hey, make this show. And she's like, right. well, okay, I'm, I'm still making the manga, but okay. Right, right, right. And I think they did a good job because this isn't in the manga at all, this story. No, it's not. So, again, it's just, I don't know if there's a name for this. There probably is, but, you know... Th- we got to go to the beach. We got to go here. This right. is just another location that we're yes. taking stock enemy characters to. Yes. Uh, thermal expansion you know, <laughs> from Evangelion. Um, and it's it, it's fine. At least we hit the emotions. We have a c- kind of cool fight with the bad guy or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, how are you going to go to a hot spring and no no monkeys? Well, yeah. Where, where are my I, snow monkeys? Yeah, I, I, I hear you. They're sitting in the hot they, spring. They, they freaking love the hot springs. <laughs> There's yeah. so many great pictures out there. Ooh, monkey tattoos. Monkey tattoos. Check these monkeys for tattoos. <laughs> but not, not enough to go above a two for me. All right. Uh, my English title is Optimistic Future, Unbinding Jealous Heart. Hmm. That's uh, that's pretty good. All right, thank you. You're getting uh, getting good, good at these. I'm tr- I'm trying, man. I'm binding jealous heart. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. My deep title is Spring Awakening. Ah, I love it. <laughs> it works so well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not. It's <laughs> Spring Awakening is a very different story if yeah, you're familiar well, with Spring Awakening. Well, it's true. That's but, true. But uh, yeah, it's a Spring. It works. Awakening. Yeah. Spring Awakening. <laughs> Next episode, we are talking about episode number 41. Mo koi kara niganai, ami to mamoru taiketsu in Japanese. I won't run away from love anymore. Ami vs. Mamoru, the English translation, and the English title, Tuxedo Unmasked. Ooh. Yeah. I wonder where this is going to go. Um, I had some ideas because I saw the I saw the preview. So, well, you've seen the episode. Already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Intro. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well, no, there's just gonna be five more episodes of. Hey, uh, did you know that uh, Venus used to be a dirt biker or something like that? And then they'll, they'll just drop like the, the finale, finale on us in the last one. Uh, I hope it's better than that. But, we'll know. see. Yeah. We'll see. Well, that's our show for this week, and the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor Noob. Where are my snow monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>